longer acceptable anywhere, particularly in the modern world, um, to not be too concerned about your impacts on the environment around you. Um, it has gone from something that had very little attention that now it's become the premier activity when you're talking about conducting your business operations. But we need to all take on, take responsibility for this because we all need to be connected to the Bahamas. And what happens is a lot of people detach themselves and say, this doesn't affect me. But you'll find that in time, as we're having now with the crime, everybody's being affected. You must always keep your environment clean and when you dump, make sure it goes to the dump instead of throwing it everywhere around the place. And when your parents throw stuff out the window on the, on the highway, remind them never to do it again. I can remember times when this beach was almost immaculate. I mean, it was well kept, it was well preserved. Um, you know, there were times when people had more, took more pride. You know, but nowadays it seems that everyone wants to pass the buck. Nobody wants to take the responsibility. In other words, if you see something on the ground, why not pick it up yourself and put it in the in the can? You know, and put it in the uh, in the in the in the bin. Um, this this seems to be a, 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 an attitude that is prevailing globally, for whatever reasons. Um, you know, everyone wants to just pass the responsibility on to somebody else. On my behalf, I think they could do better, but. As us being, as us being the, the people in the community, what we need to do is don't really only supply on the government or our port authority or whatever. We need to do our part. To keep my environment clean, to go around and not see people dumping anything around the streets. Uh, the one thing that the residents can do is basically keep their surroundings clean. I think if it's spread off that one individual can keep their surroundings clean and the neighbor next door do the same thing, it will spread throughout the community and you will see that we will not have to really focus too much on environmental issues. We can focus on other issues in our community. An island barely 100 miles long and 17 miles wide, Grand Bahama is the jewel of the Northern Bahamas. It's miles and miles of beaches, rich pine forests, coral reefs, wildlife, and abundant natural freshwater resources all come together to form a beautiful place to live for the more than 50,000 residents and a destination for hundreds of thousands of visitors every year. You know, a lot of people, when they come in the community and they see the community clean, they wouldn't be trying this here and trying that there and trying the next thing there because the thing is about when they come in, they meet it clean. So when they go out, they leave it clean. So that way when they go out and say, and hear somebody say, boy, I've been in the high rock and uh, you should see that community, boy. It's so nice and clean and quiet. You know, that's what the tourist members always say when, they, when you sit down and talk with them. You know, how clean the community is and it's so quiet. And they could come on the beach and sit down and relax and lay off and relax and nobody to disturb. High Rock is just one of the quiet settlements in East Grand Bahama. While it is an area that has sustained itself mostly on fishing for decades, it is also an area that has become one of the most important ecological centers of Grand Bahama, with some smaller hotels and key natural resource areas, including the Lukaya Caves National Park, operated by the Bahamas National Trust. We certainly do need the investment, there's no question about that. Uh, but we need to preserve the environment as, as best we can. And there's so much land though. I think there is some that could be set aside uh, judiciously for investment and some uh, for just the environment because as a matter of fact, it's the environment that attracted investment in the first place. Financial investment and infrastructure development has been a driving force behind the Grand Bahama Port Authority, the company that manages the city of Freeport. The Port Authority knows that a healthy balance between progress and environmental protection is a challenging but essential objective. It, it certainly plays a pivotal role. Um, if the island is not uh, presentable, investors and visitors alike will not be attracted to our destination. Um, often people tend to want to uh, be in places that are appealing um, 
in its appearance. And the same holds true for the investor in attracting additional opportunities. You only have one opportunity to make a first impression. And if a tourist comes here and sees garbage scattered everywhere or otherwise not kept, or an investor may come here on vacation and say, boy, this is a, a nice place. I might, you know, bring my multi-billion dollar business down here one day, but sees, you know, garbage everywhere and place not kept up. Obviously, they're gonna not think that, you know. So a tourist, for instance, may not recommend it to their friends or family, or, or they may just go back with a negative opinion saying, you know, we had a great time, but it was a little shabby or a little dirty. So certainly if we have an environment that's always inviting, that's always clean, and encourages that visitor, that return visitor, to come back over and over again, certainly there will be more dollars spent. Investors have the same view, I believe. Um, if they see a community that's worth investing in, that they can encourage their partners, their global partners, to want to come and spend that same dollar here in the Bahamas because it's a clean environment, um, both aesthetically and, and otherwise, then it certainly will create a better economic environment for us as well. One of the greatest assets that Grand Bahama Island has is its tremendous supply of fresh water. No other populated island in the Bahamas has such a large area available for well field development. In New Providence, water has been barged in from Andros for decades and now much of the water used there is created using reverse osmosis plants. Grand Bahama doesn't have as many challenges or costs when it comes to its water supply. What we're looking at is a plan of the W6 pumping station. We are presently located here on the map. This is one of our main facilities and this map shows all the wells in this area of Lukai Estates. This plant is a, a key plant. It supplies 65% of our water to Grand Bahama. In a hurricane, this, after a hurricane, this is the one that we look to get up right away. This expansive water resource is in the unpopulated area known as Lukaya Estates. Water is drawn from the freshwater lens using submersible pumps and then fed back to the main pumping station. There, chlorine is added to meet bacteriological standards for drinking water. The chlorine levels are carefully monitored, measured, and tested to ensure its effectiveness. Large storage tanks like these and others located in the city ensure that adequate water supply is available for the day-to-day -day needs of residents and businesses from Freeport to West End. But even with these efforts to protect our water supply, there are things that can have a serious negative effect on this precious resource. Bear in mind that anything you throw in the ground, whether it's an old paint can, paint thinner, lead battery, anything. One day it might find its way into the freshwater lens, which is below us and not very far below us. So anything you throw in there may one day end up in our freshwater. Fortunately, so far, uh, we have uh, very good water quality in Freeport still. If you allow oil or other contaminants to just drop on the ground, it's going to make its way somehow underground into the water tables. Uh, yes, Grand Bahama is blessed with fresh water. Um, I mean, you know, we, we drink it and cook in it without having to, to sanitize it, like in Nassau or other islands where they don't have that luxury. So we need to be mindful of protecting that, that, that asset. Dennis Garcia says that our garbage today can be our problems of tomorrow. Proper disposal of, of, of waste products, whether it be garbage, automotive stuff, uh, everybody has to be conscious of the fact that everything you throw on the ground uh, could one day come back at you. We depend so much on our groundwater resources and you know for the most part they are, they are intact and so we want to safeguard it for future preservation, we want to safeguard it for now and so we're encouraging persons not to pollute their groundwater by any of their actions, whether it's dumping over refrigerators and refrigerants leaking into the groundwater for us to consume. Objective is not to let oil go into the ground. By disposing it into the pine yard or somewhere in the garbage bins, they tend to get into the underground and seep into the water table. And we want to try to protect that. Um, you know, Grand Bahama is one of the better water reservoirs in the whole country. 
Um, so we want to keep it that way. In an effort to preserve our environment, several local companies have teamed up with the Grand Bahama Port Authority and the Keep Grand Bahama Clean initiative to collect and process used motor oil and transmission fluid. Not only does this help protect our environment, but it is one of the few recycling options available. Uh, we have the capabilities of um, being able to take the waste oil and put, putting it, blending it back into our um, crude oil reserves. Um, crude oil is where it came from in, in the first instance. So once we put it back and mix it back into the crude oil, it will go into a refinery where it's further um, broken down and separated into the various products. Um, so it'll come back again as um, motor oil. Vopac is a key part of this collection and recycling process. Their crews visit the three collection centers in Grand Bahama about every two weeks to gather the accumulated oil and transmission fluid that residents and mechanics drop off there. The 250 gallon containers are used to deposit the fluids that are collected, and the fluids are then pumped into VOPAC tankers for transport. Environmental coordinator for VOPAC, Julian Sawyer, said that all you have to do is get to one of the collection sites and they take it from there. This is one of the good things about um, this program. Once you can contain the oil in a plastic container, or drum, or even the water bottles, and get it here on site, we have um, several larger containers that we just pour the, the waste oil into these containers and they'll be um, commingled with all the other residents' um, dis disposal. And that way, it's, all, it's, easy. it's an easy program to use, so we encourage everybody to come forward and put it into the drum so that we can take it and get it re refined again. There are currently three collection depots in Grand Bahama, AID on Queens Highway, Freeport Jet Wash on West Atlantic Drive, and Municipal Motors on the corner of Coral Road and East Sunrise Highway. The people who are, are, are mechanics, um, residents who are fixing boats or any vehicle that uses um, and has to dispose of motor oil, in particular, and transmission oil, um, you're encouraged to go to one of the three depots and deposit it, um, the base oil in there. If everyone that handles these types of chemicals takes advantage of this free service, it will virtually eliminate the potential for contamination of Grand Bahama's groundwater resources. Specifically those businesses involved with any type of toxic chemicals, um, involved in any types of oil changes and things of that nature, can certainly bottle them, take them to designated spots as opposed to just pouring them out on the ground and them seeping into the groundwater. Garbage. It's a fact of life. With more than 60,000 residents in Grand Bahama, we create a lot of garbage. When our garbage is collected and carried away, it's tempting to think that it's gone. In reality, though, it has to go somewhere. And for most of Grand Bahama, that somewhere is the Pine Ridge Landfill. Every year, more than 100,000 tons of waste arrives at the Pine Ridge Landfill, where it is processed and managed in ways that help protect our environment and help protect the residents of Grand Bahama. That landfill is a specially designed landfill to accept waste, from municipal waste particularly, and it's lined so that you know there, there's no seepage again into our groundwater, because groundwater again is so it's such an important resource that we have in this country and on this island. They certainly check and make sure that they're monitoring the systems around it, that they're monitoring the groundwater on a regular basis to ensure that nothing is breached in terms of that liner and you know that garbage is properly designated and sectioned off and disposed of and, and treated properly before disposal. This is a class D landfill and um, that is a category used by the US EPA. A class D landfill is designed to 
A, capture any contaminated runoff, to recirculate that runoff and dispose of it through absorption in the garbage. B, you have to cover the garbage on a regular basis. This prevents um, insects and rodent infestations. Um, also controls odors. And a natural byproduct of the decomposition of the, uh, of the garbage is uh, our um, carbon dioxide and methane gas. That methane gas is collected through a series of pipes and valves that are placed inside the landfill during the filling process. The methane gas is extracted from the landfill and pumped to a flare where it is harmlessly burned off. As the methane gas volume increases over time, the gas can be used in beneficial ways such as a heating or fuel source for certain kinds of electrical generators. Lou Carroll, general manager at Sanitation Services, says not to confuse a landfill with a dump. An open dump is just that. You, you dump the garbage on the ground, you use up a lot of space because you don't have the right equipment, you don't have the compaction. We get about uh, 1,500 pounds per cubic yard here at this landfill. I mean, in an open dump, you'd be lucky to get 600. So you would use that much more space. Rodent infestation, insect uh, infestation, breeding, um, odors, that's what a Class D landfill uh, prevents. A landfill is lined and a dump is not. Um, the management styles are, are quite different. You have sporadic burnings a lot occurring in dumps as opposed to landfills where it's, it's more managed. And so that is, is one of the primary you know, reasons why it's so different. Uh, landfill also encourages cells. And what I mean by cells is that it takes into consideration lifespans and expected debris accumulation whereas a dump can go out of hand and, and continue to accumulate beyond, you know, infinity in a sense. Um, but a landfill is certainly a more managed system of controlling and disposing your waste. Garbage that arrives at the landfill is separated into various types and is handled in different ways so that the minimum amount of space is used. The runoff from the landfill is also managed to ensure that the natural freshwater resources of our island are not negatively affected. Beyond the systems and processes used at the Pine Ridge Landfill, every resident has an important role to play in helping to manage the waste that we all create. The type of containers people use, um, the fact that the containers are uh, covered, help us tremendously. It helps the community. The daily collection that we do um, is just for household garbage. If you put a big piece of metal in it, we can't take it up because the, the trucks are not designed for that. Those residents that pay service charges to the Port Authority are entitled to a bulk pickup. Duplexes and less, uh, so that's duplexes and single family homes. They are entitled to yard waste and bulk pickup. That's furniture, appliances, that sort of thing. The only thing that they would have to pay for if they call sanitation is if it's some construction debris. But anything else, you can call sanitation, give them your address, your telephone number, and within 24 hours, we normally pick up. Indiscriminate dumping is unfortunately a common practice in Grand Bahama. Rather than disposing of garbage in a proper way, residents will often travel down side roads and dump household garbage, appliances, vehicles, and dangerous chemicals there. This practice is a bad choice for a number of reasons. A, it's unsightly. Um, B, most of appliances, um, the type of things that people dump old refrigerators, they collect water. If you put a, uh, uh, something in the bush that collects water, that holds water, you're going to promote mosquito infestation. If there's any food attached to whatever you are um, throwing in the bush, you're going to promote rodent infestation. Okay. Another thing, even if they don't collect anything, they pose a problem in that they, pro 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 they provide a, a habitat for bees. And you know that we've had several dogs killed um, um, over the years. Um, they were attacked by bees. So there's just, apart from a bit of sight, there's just a host of reasons why people should not. It's the wrong thing to do. A container is provided at Pine Ridge Landfill for residents to come and dump their own household waste, free of charge. This easy and convenient location just inside the landfill gates off Grand Bahama Highway, which is open on weekdays and Saturday mornings, makes it easy to dispose of larger waste items that might be too bulky for the normal garbage collection trucks. Residents in East Grand Bahama have a well-planned and maintained waste transfer station located just off the main highway. This large site has designated areas for various types of waste, including a used oil drop-off section. 
bulk waste items are transferred to Pine Ridge Landfill for further processing and management. We are so fortunate in Grand Bahama, and especially in the city of Freeport, to have 17 parks for our people to go to, to take the kids on the swing, to let your toddlers walk in a safe space. We are so blessed, we are so lucky. They are all located in largely populated areas. They are free of charge, the recreational facilities are maintained and repaired by the city of Freeport. The community have an avenue where they can gather in a safe, friendly, and clean environment. It is a community partnership between the Grandmama Port Authority, the City of Freeport District Council, and the community in which the parks are built. It also must be a community obligation to keep these 17 park and recreational facilities clean, in good shape, and in good repair. Public parks, beaches, Nature areas and playgrounds are an important element of a maturing and developed city. And while these parks have been created out of the joint efforts and funding of the key stakeholders in the city, it is the responsibility of the broader community to ensure that these areas are not left littered with garbage. From that plastic or styrofoam container that somebody would throw out of their vehicle that they're moving, if they were to take it and dump it into a garbage bin, it definitely won't end up being something that you may have a fish or a lizard consume and they either die or they become contaminated with some sort of um, foreign chemicals. Dispose of your rubbish, take it with you. And if every person who came out to use our facilities just did that, it would make such a tremendous difference. Simple, you know, you don't throw garbage outside your, um, your front door. You don't throw it outside your um, back, back door. So when you are in a setting, you want to pick up your garbage. You're not gonna just get up and, and leave it. Wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody did that, just took their rubbish with them when they went? Protecting the public areas of our island doesn't end at the water's edge. The coral reefs, the seabed, and the ocean's resources also need to be cared for. Being a boating person, you like to go out, you want to catch a fish or dive up a conch, you know, for a meal. Um, it would be nice to know that you would be able to go out and get some, but there are Unfortunately, there are persons that will just take and take and take and take and take until they've exhausted, you know, the conch in that area or the fish in that area. And then they'll pull up somewhere and they'll just crack the conch out, dump the shells right there in the ocean or they'll dump them on somebody's property. You know, this is not right. All we're asking, you know, take conch, that's what it's there for, but take it in, in moderation and clean up after yourself. Take your shells and put them somewhere where they won't damage anything. There are too many areas, conch grounds, where there are dead conchs, dead conch shells there. And, you know, it's been said many times that conch will not come back to an area where there's scattered dead conch shells. So just put them somewhere where they won't get in the way, where they won't, you know, damage the environment further. Educating our youth is the key factor. Um, the youth are the future leaders, um, the developers, and the decision makers of um, this island and indeed our country. Um, so by educating them, they will pass that education on to their peers. They will certainly pass that education on to their parents as well. Um, we will. Um, would have instilled in them the pride, the sensitivities, and the knowledge of what benefits it would derive from keeping the island clean and certainly the environment on the whole. I've always been a, a strong supporter of 
educating our children while they're young and still in school because uh, any change, any ma major change to habit is going to be a generation away. If you teach your children now to not litter, to protect the environment, to, to not overfish, overkill, whatever, when they grow up, they're going to remember that and they're going to teach their children not to do it. And eventually, hopefully, you know, there'll be lots of conch and fish and grouper in the ocean and whatnot. And uh, the drinking water will be plentiful and nice and clean and so on and so forth. We wanted to change that strategy a little with Creek Grandma Mama Clean and the program. So we're going into schools, we're starting with the young ones firstly, encouraging them to keep a clean environment, showing them the importance, showing them the linkages to health and wealth, and showing them the need for just that for future generations. The Keep Grand Bahama Clean Committee, headed by Nikira Wilchcomb, focuses a lot of attention on training school-aged children about how they can make a difference by improving the environment around them. We always encourage them to keep even their school environment clean and let that transcend from the school environment to the home environment as they walk home, as they travel around the island. They also are little ambassadors, and so they can certainly encourage their parents to do the same. You know, we always leave the message, make sure that you tell mom and dad not to throw this or that out of the window or not to go uh, to a deserted area to leave some, uh, you know, furniture or appliance in a deserted area. So we're encouraging them to do that. And I think a lot of parents listen to their children when there's a little voice of reasoning. And so they, they consider and ponder that and say, oh my goodness, a child is telling me this, so I, I think I better stop. We go about our daily lives. We drive to work, to school. We may go to the movies or go out to eat. It's easy to forget that the things that we do, the choices we make, affect our city, our island, and our country. We just need to be a lot more aware of our environment. We just need to take a, a little bit more care of where we live, our surroundings, our, our neighbors, because it can only be beneficial to this island. We have tourists that, that tour. They go everywhere. What are they thinking when they pass by mounds of garbage? We just need to be um, better citizens all around to ensure that our island is kept a lot cleaner than it is right now. We have to step forward and let people know exactly uh, what you're doing wrong, how you dispose of things, and also assist in disposing things and making sure that we um, um, also inform the individuals who are responsible for guiding us just as well on the way that we should make sure that our community is protected and preserved for the future of our children. One of the things they can do is, when they come out, please, whatever garbage they bring, take it back with them. Uh, don't discard um, items on the side of the road. We seem to have a problem with um, taking our garbage back with us. It takes the efforts of every resident to protect our island to ensure that our island is the kind of place we want to live in and that visitors will want to come to. Personal responsibility is something that we seldom like to take. We were always, you know, we're a society a lot of times that likes to point fingers, but there are certain things that all of us can do in protecting our environment. And so if we take it on as a personal um, role or personal mandate, then certainly we can move a long way. It is not just in the surrounding communities that residents must take individual action. The people of the inner city of Freeport have an important role to play. In the community, me standing as an individual and thing, I would like to see the community build up and I would like to put my arm more into the community. And just like how you see right here behind us and thing, you see you don't have a starter. We have fruit trees and different peas trees and pumpkins and different things we have growing and stuff. If we could get this whole section growed like that and thing, with majority of people within the community pull together and put these things and put their hand together with it, it'll be better for the community and it'll serve more purpose where it is that all the garbage and the dumping won't have to be here. We won't have a dirty environment, we'll have a clean, healthy environment where it is that'll be something that you could benefit off. You see? We would just like to encourage every person individually that uh, instead of looking to other social groups and, and uh, non-governmental organizations and even the government itself to uh, help to correct these uh, problems, 
We need to take each one individually. We need to take an individual responsibility to uh, uh, seek to do our little part. For instance, we can keep our yards clean. We can keep our houses painted, freshly painted. We can keep everything looking nice because what happens is the basic appearance of our environment actually, uh, it, what it does, it has an influence upon our uh, mindsets. It has an influence upon our moods and uh, our state of mind. We got to put our resources together and work together as a community. And, I, and if they see a leader out there picking up a council or picking up a bottle, then they realize, hey, this thing means a lot to him and it should mean a lot to you for the future of our community. And as you can see, I, I'm, I'm sure that many of you can see that the community have taken a really good transformation in the past few months. The community must understand that there are some things that truly belong to them. With that ownership comes a responsibility and a partnership to help us keep the areas clean, to help us not break down the swings or the sets or the basketball court or the fences. There comes a true value to know that you are a part of something that is growing and developing when you honor the fact that even though it is someone's role to keep it clean, it is my responsibility that the cleanliness is maintained in an orderly fashion. Maintaining a clean environment is not only good for your health, but it is the law. The Royal Bahamas Police Force is mandated to ensure that citizens do not break the laws that are already in place to protect the natural resources of the Bahamas. This is not only for the benefit of the environment, but has far-reaching impact on our society. You may find that persons feel that this is a small offense or an insignificant offense. But we have found scientifically that when persons involve and indulge in minor crimes and go unpunished, they very well graduate over a period of time, quite possibly, to more heinous crimes. When we see areas of um, increase in litter, increase in destruction, increase in um, accidents, increase in, in crimes, it reflects an unhealthy society. God has given us this beautiful environment and so as stewards I think you know it, it's, it's very important for us to take care of what God has given us and passing it on to generations is something that we should not take lightly. We're not separate and apart. We have to get involved at whatever level with what happens in our country. Because even though you may be okay, what you do today determines the kind of Bahamas our children will experience. So we must take some responsibility in shaping and in terms of leaving the best possible heritage for them. A fist is stronger than the open hand. So if you separate it in the community like fingers, if all your fingers open up, you're not strong. But if you boil your fists together, you know that's a heavy blow one of them can throw. So if the people in the community could come together and draw together and, then and stand as one, we'll be a stronger nation and everything. We'll be a stronger community and then. This is where we live. This is, the, you know, these, these beautiful resources are ours to use. I mean, we're only passing through. You know, we're not going to be here forever. We, we met them here when we were born and we're gonna, we would like to leave them here when we move on. So they're only ours to use while we're here. We should make an effort to, to protect it. My vision is also that uh, as a result of the campaign, that keeping our environment clean becomes uh, a way of life for uh, both the residents and developers alike in the city. I hope that we can look back at such efforts um, and say what a difference education has made to um, our island. Well, sensitize each other. You know, residents can certainly sensitize each other about the importance of keeping a clean environment. If I live in a community, you know, I can become that community leader that engages persons of that community to do regular cleanups, whether it be monthly, annually, what have you. And so encouraging that type of attitude is what we'd like to see residents do. Every resident of Grand Bahama has an individual responsibility to protect our environment through the everyday choices we make. 
It is the most important way that you can help protect our environment and preserve the beauty of our island. You'll keep Grand Bahama clean today and for our future. This message is brought to you by the Keep Grand Bahama Clean Committee and spearheaded by the Grand Bahama Port Authority. Contact us today for more information about how you can help keep Grand Bahama clean. It's everyone's business and everyone's responsibility. Our lifestyles, our future, and our economy depend on it.